So a guy that studied mythology is a cultural anthropologist called Joseph Campbell, and he was a, a, a student of Carl Jung. And he traveled the world in order to understand why different cultures develop mythologies and find out whether it was just random superstition. And he wrote an entire library of, of books, uh, The Masks of God, and his kind of most famous book is called A Hero with a Thousand Faces, where he effectively distilled every single mythology into a single structure. And he recognized that stories actually have the same structure. And that sounds bizarre and it sounds ridiculous because we've all watched so many stories and we all know that they're different. But the best way to understand the significance of this is to understand that everyone you've ever met has a skull. And that skull has a structure. But everyone you've ever met also has their own expressions and their own way of communicating that makes them unique. But you need the structure of the skull, otherwise a face would be incomprehensible. And what he recognizes is that story structure is there as a holding frame for you to put in ingredients that communicate to an audience. You've all seen Monomyth. You, the Monomyth was the name that he gave it. You've seen it if you've watched Mad Max. You've seen it if you've watched The Matrix. You've seen it if you've watched Lord of the Rings. You've seen it if you've watched Aliens. These are all Monomyth. But perhaps the most famous Monomyth for us as a modern audience is Star Wars. Now, before George Lucas was a director, he was a cultural anthropologist, the same as Joseph Campbell and Carl Jung. In fact, Star Wars is based upon Joseph Campbell's monomyth. He actually read the monomyth and created the story because of it, and he openly credits Joseph Campbell as a, effectively a creator in this, in this saga. I'm gonna take you through the monomyth on a, on a kind of simplified level. It's a very complex thing, but it's also very elegant. First, think about it as a, as a circle. And the circle has two axes and two thresholds. And the whole point of this journey is to psychologically go through an experience that your psyche will understand in order to inherit values. The vertical axis is that you start in the ordinary world, and then at some point you cross a threshold into the special world. Now these are metaphors. The ordinary world is the world that you know. It's the safe space where the rules have been defined, where everything's laid out for you. And then the special world is the world of the things you don't know, including yourself, the unconscious that's repressed in the shadow. The other axis is your current self, the old self, and then you cross a threshold and you become a new version of yourself by, by finding something valuable in the process of going through a journey that scares you. So there are 12 steps. These, this is a simplified version by a guy called Christopher Vogler, who was a story consultant in Hollywood in the 80s. He worked on The Lion King, he worked on a whole range of films, and he effectively distilled Joseph Campbell's very complex mythological formula into a memo. So I'm gonna take you through the steps, but keep in mind that they're about you, they're about they're not about space princesses and intergalactic empires, they're about your mind. So the first step is the ordinary world. The ordinary world is where the rules have been delineated, you're protected by an authority that cares for you, but you realize that something is kind of missing, and that happens in the form of a voice that comes. And like Jason described yesterday in the opening talk, it's a whisper. It's a whisper that suggests to you that something, you need to go on a journey, you need to listen closely, which is why it's such a a small and understated moment in Star Wars. Luke realizes that this is important somehow, but he doesn't know quite what to do about it. So he needs to go and find somebody that can give him some mentorship, which is meet the mentor. He needs to ask questions about what this could mean. And the mentor, which is a part of your psyche, which says, you should really go through with this, says, yeah, definitely go on a journey, find out what this message means. Of course you're afraid, because it's new territory, no one really wants to go out of their comfort zone. The refusal of the call is, is effectively you being afraid of making a step forward. And ultimately, you have to make a step at some point because ideally, your auntie and uncle won't get barbecued by the empire, but at some point, the authority that look after you will not be there. So you have to make the next step into the unknown world, the world that scares you, which is crossing the threshold, which is stage five. That's the first moment where you go from the ordinary world, everything you know, to the special world. And this is the moment where you go and realize that things are very different in the unknown world. Once you've crossed that threshold, you see the entire space of the galaxy. And there's weird people, they're smoking, they're killing each other, there's vices. It's the shadow world. And you make friends, you develop allies, you develop enemies, you learn new skills. And in this space, which is unknown, you have to advance yourself and you have to evolve. And then you have to go through the approach. Now, the Death Star, which is quite an infamous uh, kind of icon represents something in your psyche that you've encaged, that you've, you've repressed. So you're going into a part of your psyche that your ego has closed off because it's terrified of, it's been punished in the past. So in mythology, it's quite often a cave with a dragon in it. 
because the dragon represents the repressed animal instincts inside of you, and the gold that you steal is the valuable stuff that you get by confronting your shadow. There's also the belly of the whale. If you've seen Pinocchio, you know that Pinocchio goes into the belly of a whale to save his father. And in the case of Star Wars, Luke goes in and saves Princess Leia. And that means, on a psychological level, it's about connecting with the feminine principle, which is why she's his sister and not a lover, because it's about the, the non-sexual relationship between the masculine and feminine principle. During this, you have an ordeal, because going into something you're afraid of is really scary, and you feel like you're going to die, because you are going to die, because a part of you has to die in order for you to renew yourself into a new form. That part of you that dies is the part that sent you on the mission in the first place. So Obi-Wan Kenobi goes, and suddenly, as a personality, you find yourself having to be responsible for yourself. But that's OK, because you've gained something. You've gained a new insight into yourself. You've gained a new element of your personality that you didn't have access to before. You then go on the road back, which means to return from the special world and go back to the ordinary world that you came from. And in doing so, you're resurrected as someone stronger, someone better, someone more able to handle the challenges, someone less afraid. This takes the form of a resurrection where you take on a new persona. Now, the persona is not a bad thing. It's something that you have to constantly reinvent as you go through the stages of life. You can't be a child forever. And that's what mythology spends all of its time metaphorically describing, is you have to move from one stage of life willingly to the next. You go and kill the Death Star. That's the end of that repressed element inside of your psyche. And then you return with the elixir to the ordinary world where everyone celebrates your, your return because you're a better person for it. And this is known in mythology as the master of two worlds, which means you're the master of your conscious and your unconscious. All of this is a metaphor. It's all a metaphor, which is why you can relate to the idea of eight-foot space apes like Chewie without going, I've never met an eight-foot space ape. I also don't have a space princess sister or a tyrannical father that runs an intergalactic warlord system. So, we relate to it because it speaks to the psyche, and the psyche has a completely different language to the rational mind. But to simplify it further, just to make real sense of why this is so universal, is this is Dan Harmon, if you guys are fans of Rick and Morty. Rick and Morty is also based upon the monomyth. Every single episode is based upon the structure. And Dan Harmon simplified the structure even further. There's you, you need something, you go, you search in the unknown world, you find something, you take it, you return with it, and you've changed. This is life. All life, from the basic protozoa all the way up to modern man, uses this system cyclically. That's why we encode it as a metaphorical mythology, because we need it. It's a manual for living. It's not a superstition. It's literally a dramatization of every single stage of your life. What Joseph Campbell recognized is that the monomyth is the idea of human life as a journey towards the ultimate goal of wholeness and self-realization. And those terms, self-realization, are from Jungian psychology. So the more and more you do this journey, the more you unify the shadow, the repressed shadow, and your persona, and the more you become whole. The idea of the monomyth is that you continuously challenge yourself in areas that scare you in order to make yourself less of a dualistic being. So the ordinary and special world, these are metaphors for the known and the unknown the persona and the shadow, because the known, of course, is everything that you've got a rule system for. But ultimately, it's control and chaos. We're all terrified of chaos, but keep in mind that chaos is where everything that's ever been put into order comes from. We need to go into chaos all the time, and the people that go into chaos on our behalf we call heroes, because they go and do shit that is really challenging and really difficult, and they bring back results that we all benefit from, whether it be someone discovering penicillin, whether it being someone going into a situation and saving human life, even though it's terrifying.